Want to learn more about your true nature? Check out the many interviews and short videos produced by our friends at iSpirit.us. Like their page at facebook.com slash iSpirit.dotus and browse through their many posts and be inspired by the wonderful and positive messages about life that they share with their community. If you would like to study the works of Spiritism and delve deeper into this philosophy that will be guaranteed to enrich your life by teaching you about the greater life, check out EdisseyofAmerica.com. At EdisseyofAmerica.com you can find all of the seminal works of Spiritism written and compiled by Alan Kardec, translated from its original French to English, as well as other Spiritist works that serve to add to the material treasure that is the Spiritist philosophy and doctrine. As one of our subscribers and followers, be sure to use promo code iSpirit underscore love to get 10% off from your next purchase and continue to support this beautiful work of dissemination. iSpirit underscore love to get 10% off from your next purchase. Thank you. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another one of our videos concerning the book, What is Spiritism? published in 1859 by Alan Kardec. The purpose of these videos, as we have mentioned in the past, is to provide a brief introduction to this wonderful philosophy that was bestowed upon us in the middle of the 19th century, a philosophy of life, of the greater life, that teaches us how we ought to see things with a broader perspective instead of the narrow view which we have of the physical senses and the physical eyes that our body has, but instead to look at the world and at the universe with the amplified vision of the spirit that we are, the immortal being that inhabits the vessel with which we traverse this current journey on earth. It is a wonderful and beautiful doctrine, and as always, I invite everyone that has watched these videos and everyone that is just now beginning to become familiar with the Spiritist Doctrine to pick up the, a copy of these books, the basic works of Spiritism, the five seminal works, what is Spiritism, the Medium's Book, Heaven and Hell, um, the Gospel According to Spiritism, and Genesis. These constitute the five pillars on which the Spiritist Doctrine is based, as well as other ancillary works, which we do not need to get into detail here. And this short book, What is Spiritism, should be the primer for everyone, the first book to be read, because it does give a broad stroke of the brush on this infinite canvas, which is this philosophy of the greater life. And you can acquire all of these books on the internet. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on Liao Publisher, or excuse me, not Liao Publisher. You can find them at ediseyofamerica.com, which has all of these available for you, the reader, in several languages as well. And if you happen to be one of the people who visit our center, you can also purchase them there inside of our institution or our establishment, if you will. So let's get into the third and final part of this book, which is chapter three, and it is entitled The Solution to a Few Problems by Means of the Spiritist Doctrine. Chapter three begins with a section entitled The Plurality of Worlds. Chapter 3 is structured much like the Spirit's book is for those who are familiar with it. It comes in a question and answer format, each item being a question followed by an answer. The questions were those proposed to the Spirits, and the answers were those provided by them via the manifestation of mediumistic writing in the meetings that occurred during the middle of the 19th century by the mediums who were present. And they were the ones that, through their mediumship, wrote these answers that were given by the Spirits. You'll find more about this in detail in the introduction to the Spirit's book, where you can learn a lot more about how this worked. But it is up to you to want to buy the book and read it and study more about it. For the purposes of this video, we'll confine ourselves to just going over the items and talking a little bit about them. Item 105 asks, are, there, are the many worlds traveling through space peopled with inhabitants as is the Earth? And the answer is, all the spirits have affirmed it, and reason states that it must be so. Of course, and we already have this idea. The logic of the 21st century man or woman, the 21st century civilization that inhabits this earth, can no longer think that the focal point of everything in the universe is limited to the earth. 
Technology has made it possible for us to ponder greater things. Astronomy, throughout its successive evolution via the ages of humanity, has granted us the ability to see space through different lenses, literally. Lenses that have allowed us to penetrate into the depths of stars and celestial bodies and heavenly bodies of which we had not even thought of before. So how can these billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions of orbs that are all over the universe populating this infinity which we call the cosmos, how is it possible that only this tiny little blue pale dot, to quote Carl Sagan, would be the only planet that is inhabited by beings? It would make no sense. Why would God in his infinite wisdom, the supreme intelligence, as is the answer to question number one of the Spirit's book, why would the supreme intelligence create this immensity and only give one planet life? It makes no sense. For us, it makes no sense. And if we reflect about it, it makes zero sense. Continuing with the answer, since the Earth occupies no special class in the universe, either because of its position or size, and it really doesn't. The Earth is very, very tiny. All it takes is for us to go to YouTube and search a video with size comparisons of planets and different stars, and we begin to see how really small we are compared to our Sun, and how small our Sun really is compared to the larger stars that astronomy has documented for us. Since Earth, the Earth occupies no special place, no special class in the universe, either because of its position or size, there is nothing that would justify believing that it alone is privileged enough to be inhabited. Moreover, God would not have created those billions of globes simply for the pleasure of our own eyes, especially since the vast majority is beyond our sight. Exactly. So what to say about the ones that we cannot see yet? We can't. We must assume that via our logic and our reflections, that indeed the other worlds are populated. Populated by beings that perhaps we can't see because of their different manifestation, their, difficult, their, their different essence, a physical nature that is not the same as ours. There are many things that we can ponder. And this is why the Spiritist Doctrine is, Spiritist Doctrine is wonderful, because it makes us think, it makes us reflect, not only about life on Earth, but life in the greater world and life in space, the space with which all the spiritual beings, that is every single being inhabiting every planet, lives and resides. Question 106 asks, if other worlds are inhabited, are all their inhabitants similar to those of the earth? In other words, could these inhabitants live among, amongst us and us amongst them? And the, an the answer is, their overall form might be more or less the same, but their composition must be adapted to the environment in which they live. Just as fish are made to live in the water and birds in the air. If the environment is different, as everything would lead us to believe, and just as astronomical observations seem to show, their physical composition must be different. Also, hence, in their normal state, they probably could not live amongst one another with the same bodies. All the spirits have confirmed this to be a fact. And that is easy to confirm as well for us. All we have to do is look at the elements that, are, that uh, compose or constitute the atmosphere of our neighboring planets. Us humans would not be able to live in most of those environments. Therefore, the beings that do inhabit those environments must necessarily be made of a different constitution. They must necessarily have different material that make up their bodies. They must necessarily, maybe, be manifested in a physical sense in a dimension, dimension with, in, in which we cannot see, in which our physical instruments are unable to pick up and detect. And it might be why every time we observe these planets, we do not capture living beings or uh, animals or vegetation or things of that nature in these other planets. It could be so. This is a possibility. There are other things that we may, can talk about and go into, but this is not the point of this video. The point of this video is simply to arouse your interest in the Spiritist Doctrine and see how wonderful it is because it encompasses, uh, indeed, the scientific idea, uh, the, sci the, the sciences, all of the sciences, really, um, of the Earth, of our civilization. 
So going back to the question, yes, they must be different than we are. But the spirits say that the form is more or less always the same. It is more or less sort of the human shape, the shape with which we are familiar, of the, the biped, the, 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 the two legs, the trunk, and the two arms, and the head, the format which seems to be the prevalent one based upon what the spirits inform us. But just because they, have, they might have the same structure, it doesn't mean that the details don't differ. Obviously, they must. They have to because they're, each of their environment is different. And if we look at question 94 of the spirits book, we find that the spirits, when they incarnate in different planets, they manifest themselves, or in other words, when they go to constitute their bodies, they utilize the material that is available on those planets to make up their bodies. So essentially, the bodies will have to be different. The materials that compose those bodies are going to be different, as I had already mentioned earlier. Item 107 asks, Assuming that these worlds are inhabited, are they in the same position as the Earth from the moral and intellectual point of view? I think most of us can already answer with an assertive no. But let's see what the spirits say. According to what the spirits have taught, the various worlds are at very different degrees of evolution. Some are in the same condition as the Earth. Others are even less evolved. The human beings on them are even more brutish, more physical, and more inclined toward evil, or have more uh, instinctual tendencies, or more corporeal needs than we do right now on the earth. Not necessarily evil. This is just a translation of a book that was written in the, in the middle of the 19th century. So we have to understand the idea and not focus so much on the words. Remember, Paul said, the letter kills it, the spirit vivifies it. On the other hand, there are worlds in which human beings are morally, intellectually, and physically more evolved, where moral evil is unknown, where the arts and sciences have attained a degree of perfection incomprehensible to us, and where the inhabitants' less physical composition is subject neither to suffering, disease, nor infirmity. People live in peace without trying to harm one another, and they do not experience the vexations, troubles, afflictions, or needs that assail Earth's people. Moreover, there are worlds that are more evolved still, where the nearly fluidic corporeal envelope approaches more and more the nature of the angels, or the purified spirits that are closer to God. In the progressive series of the worlds, the Earth is neither in the first nor the last category, but is one of the most material and least evolved. And in the Gospel according to Spiritism, there is a chapter there that talks exactly about, and I'll let you go and research it and find the chapter, that talks about the different categories of the worlds. Now, of course, there must be necessarily millions of different categories, but it was simplified and truncated for the purpose of a synth synthesis or a summary of the different levels of progression and evolution of the worlds. And they are planets in transition. Then you have primitive worlds. You have planets of trials and expiations. Planets in regeneration. We have happy worlds. And planets that are celestial or divine. And if you want to read more about it, pick up yourself a copy of the Gospel According to Spiritism and indulge yourself because once you read it, it'll make perfect sense. And so, with the very evolution that we have on Earth, with uh, seeing how there are some animals that are less evolved than other animals in terms of their physical composition, then by that we must necessarily extrapolate that this must apply to the different planets. Because if we look at, a, at the images that a telescope provides for us, what we are seeing are things that happened in the far distant past, because light travels at a specific speed, 186,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second. So the things that are coming to us and arriving to us in the spectrum with which we can see things, which, in which we can see the light, have already occurred many, many eons ago. So necessarily, if there was a world with living things that has already vanished from existence, then possibly that civilization had already advanced to its, to its apex, to the the highest point that it could advance to. And then, of course, 
all of those beings must have migrated elsewhere when that planet was no more. Because the material things, they are, they come undone. The, the material things, by that I mean uh, the worlds that we see, they come undone. But space itself continues. It is always creating. Everything is always being recycled because, of course, the Supreme Intelligence will never waste any resource. So everything is transformed. So these planets must have had, or must have, civilizations that are way ahead of us in every sense of the word. And of course, by that token, we must um, accept the fact that there must, there must also be planets that are more primitive than we are. Races that are perhaps still in the equivalent to our Stone Age, the Bronze Age, Copper Age, whatever it may be. But it must be the case. So, we find ourselves, based upon what the spirits tell us, in a level of trials and expiation, in a phase of transition towards a world of regeneration. And you can read more about that in, the, in not only the Spirits book, but also in Genesis by Alan Kardec, in the Gospel According to Spiritism, and also in some ancillary works, specifically one called Planetary Transition, that was written by the mediumship of Givaldo Pereira Franco. And you will find there a lot of information concerning this transition in which we find ourselves at the moment. Information that was also shared to us by the Mayans in their Mayan calendar. And there are many other sources that talk about this shift, this shift that goes on in the planet. But it is not a shift where the planet is going to go through cataclysms and people are going to be wiped out of the earth. No, it is a transition of the spirit where we morally progress and thus the planet, because of the morality that, that develops and uh, evolves, then by necessity, the physical portion has to also evolve to align itself with the morality of those that inhabit the planet. So there are so many things that we can go on and make this video very long, but it is not necessary for us to do that here. So this comprises the first small section entitled the plurality of the worlds, or excuse me, the uh, plurality, yeah, the plurality of worlds in chapter three. And we'll move on to the next section in our next video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.